One of the largest empires of the ancient world, which ruled over half of the world's population at the time, was the Achaemenid Empire. At its prime, it stretched from Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea all the way to the Indus River. In order to maintain an empire that stretched multiple continents, a formidable military force was needed. And in this episode, we shall discuss in detail strategies and formations used, and also strengths and weaknesses of this army. This video was brought to you by The Ancient Caravan. They make awesome history videos about ancient Iran in Farsi. You can check out their channel by finding a link to their channel in the description below or by clicking here. The Persian military force at the time was referred to as Kare, a word which meant both army and war. But before the time of Cyrus, the definition of the word was used to refer to groups of people, kinfolk or family. And it was after the fall of the Assyrian Empire and the unification of the Parsian and the Median people that the Kare became a professional military force. Through the Medians, the Achaemenians learned many forms of governance and militancy from the Assyrians. One of such policies was a reward system, where those with success on the battlefield were rewarded with land and title. These incentives were continuously used by the Sassanids and even through the Islamic Age. Another key influence by the Assyrians was the effective methods of siege, such as the use of rams, trenches, ladders, and even more sophisticated devices such as siege towers. And as such, siege engineers were introduced to the ranks of the Achaemenid Empire. At first, the Achaemenid army consisted wholly of Parsi warriors, and even when other regions were subjugated, the Iranians formed the nucleus of the imperial army. With the expansion of Persia into a world-class empire, a standing army was formed from Persians, Medes, and closely related people and an imperial army was organized by incorporating warriors from all subject nations, including Egyptians, Assyrians, and Greek mercenaries. By the time of Alexander the Great, these mercenaries had become a regular part of the Persian army, and their leaders had been incorporated into the Iranian aristocracy. These mercenaries played a major role in the Greco-Iranian culture relations, and helped an eastward expansion of Greek culture. However, over-reliance on these units was one of the reasons behind the defeat to the Macedonians and Alexander the Great. The cavalry was instrumental in conquering subject lands, and it retained its importance to the last day of the Achaemenid Empire. The cavalry was divided into light cavalry and heavy cavalry. The horsemen were equipped more or less like foot soldiers, but he carried a two javelins, one for throwing and one for fending. Different tribes such as Medes, Scythians and Parsis and Sumerians participated in the cavalry. But light cavalry with less armor were mainly from the Aparni and the Sagarthian tribes. Generally, the battle formation of the Achaemenid military was as such. The leadership, which was usually the king, was at the center, surrounded by the immortal guards. The immortals were the most elite unit in the entire army, which consisted of 10,000 men, and if any were to fall, they were immediately replaced, and thus they maintained their numbers and thus they were referred to as immortals. They were a form of infantry, armed with a short sword and a spear, as well as a bow and arrow. Therefore, these versatile units acted both as infantry and as archers. With light infantry in the center, both flanks were covered by the cavalry, and in front of the Eternals stood the Saparbara, a title which directly translated to shield bearers. Armed with a wooden hide shield, and a 1.8 meter spear. The Separbara protected the lines of light infantry and archers and stood in front of them. The design of the shields used in these troops were yet another trick learned from the Assyrians. With the use of archers, cavalry, and light infantry, the Achaemenid military created a formidable formation. The primary force in the Achaemenid Empire was the archers. The skill and effectiveness of these units were expressed by both the Greeks and the Romans. Both light infantry in the center and the light cavalry on the flanks made use of bows and arrows to create chaos amongst opposing troops before there was any contact. 
Picking the right battle spot was of utmost importance to the Achaemenians. Engineers would flatten the battlegrounds as much as they could to allow easier troop movement. In the attack of King Xerxes to Greece, a 2.2 km canal was built in the Athos Peninsula to ease the passage of the Persian fleet. And in the Battle of Guagamela, Darius III chose a flat open plain where he could deploy his larger force. The battle would begin after the positioning of the units. The offensives were usually led by noble commanders, but there were exceptions where the king would direct the attack himself. In the Battle of Kunaxa, Cyrus the Younger personally led the army against his brother, Artaxerxes II. Archers would usually start the battle. They would shoot thousands of arrows at the same time into the sky. Archers' job wasn't to hit specific targets, but to weaken the lines opposing them. You didn't necessarily have to have a good shot to be an archer for the Persian army. Fire arrows were developed to weaken and distract the opposing force. The army also included a group of slingers, who even used lead bullets to penetrate the opposing army. The cavalry would then march at the disoriented enemy lines, trying to exploit the weaker links of the opposing army. They would generally flank the opposing army to terrorize the infantry units. The infantry would then switch from bows to their short swords and attack the enemy. And the broken lines of opposition would face a final infantry charge. The Iranians disliked night marches and did not attack at night. Their daily marches were however in slow pace because of the heavy baggage train. When nightfall, they encamped in a flat area and if they were approaching the enemy, they dug a ditch and set up a ramp of sandbags around it. Rivers were forded by using rafts, boat bridges, or in faded skins, or simply by riding across on a horse and a camel. These tactics worked well against Asiatic armies, but failed against the heavily armed Greek infantry and the Macedonian phalanx. The arrows were simply stopped by the body armor and the huge shield of the hoplites. And once the hand-to-hand -hand combat begun, no amount of personal bravery could compensate for the Iranians' lack of armor and their inferior offensive weapons. For instance, at the Battle of Plataea, a fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat raged between the Iranians and the Greek hoplites. As said by Herodotus, the Iranians many times seized hold of Greek spears and broke them. For in boldness and warlike spirit, the Iranians were not a whit inferior to the Greeks, but they were without shields, untrained and far below their enemy in respect of skill in arms. Sometimes singly, and sometimes in bodies of ten, no fear and no more in numbers, they dashed forward upon the Spartan ranks, and so perished. Another weakness of the Iranians was the attitude towards their commander. With an able and far-sighted general, they displayed unsurpassed courage. But the same men took to disorderly flight as soon as the commander was killed or forced to flee. The Achaemenian army was composed of soldiers from different nationalities, such as Medes, Parsis, and Scythians, who generally were not able to communicate between one another. In addition, each nation and tribe fought based on its own tactics and this negatively impacted the coordination between them. And some of these nations and tribes were brought to fight by force and this generally lowered the morale. Finally, note that the Achaemenian army was extremely intimidating in the earlier days of the empire when Cyrus and Darius and other earlier kings ruled and they had achieved great victories. But rulers after them were not as strategic, and therefore once the Greeks figured out the weaknesses of the Persian army, they were not able to make adjustments and save their status. The first defeat of the Achaemenid army was during the ruling of the great Darius, but since it wasn't an important defeat for him, he didn't go there in person, and instead sent his meat commander. After ignoring this defeat, he made the same mistake again and was defeated in Greece. And the sequence of events led to the Persian army 
losing its reputation. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. What would you like to know about Iran or Iranians? Let us know in the comment section.